You might be thinking, so what? Almost everyone accidentally walks in on their parents doing it at some point. But unfortunately for me, my story is way more hardcore and way more embarrassing. It's only now that I look back and realize I didn't have a normal childhood. We lived in this small, eccentric, gated community where everyone knew everything about everyone. There was the uber patriotic lawn enthusiast that was out every morning polishing his flagpole, no pun intended. Then there was this paranoid single cat lady on the corner that acted as the estate's neighborhood watch, peering through the chinks in her blinds and writing down the registration plates of any suspicious cars. Oh, and finally, there was Big Kev. Big Kev looked like what happens when a bodybuilder decides to let himself go. A giant gut sat over the remnants of a Mr. Olympia body with a Trump-level tan that would make an Oompa Loompa orange with envy. Big Kev, who I'm convinced came up with his own nickname, was obnoxiously loud, flamboyant, and the only thing thicker than his southern accent was the collection of gold chains that hung from his neck. And his wife was just as strange. Huge Karen hair and cleavage for days. Almost like an adult child pageant entrant without the dance moves. Mom and dad were hesitantly friendly with them, always complaining that they were too touchy-feely and taking every opportunity to preach their wildly modern take on Christianity. They'd invite themselves over for dinner, hijacking our meals with long prayers and sermons about progressive God. I'll admit that when I was accepted into an out-of-state college, I was more than a little excited to escape the asylum that we called home. It was during one of my spring break visits home that my precious, innocent mind was scarred for life. I'd actually forgotten all about the weird collection of personalities that lived in my home estate. That is, until I pulled up outside the house and saw Miss Forever Alone Cat Lady taking photos of my car. I chuckled, waved sarcastically, and made my way up the driveway to my house. I have this weird nightmare of mom and dad changing the locks while I'm away at college, so I was pleasantly surprised when the unlocked door swung open without me having to fish around in my bag for my keys. I called out, but there was no answer. Maybe they're napping, I thought to myself. They're old, after all. I laughed lazily, entertained by my own hilarity. I made my way to the back of the house where my parents' bedroom was. I heard some banging and muffled sounds that sounded like furniture was being rearranged. When I pushed the bedroom door open, I froze in sheer disgust, shock, and horror. Mom, I said. Suddenly, I heard a cough from the other side of the room. Dad, I stammered, even more confused. The panic and attempts to get dressed set in immediately. Uh, oh, we can explain, Dad tried to say, but I was gone before Kev could put on his smiley face boxer shorts. I jumped back in my car and sped off, not knowing whether to cry or laugh hysterically. My phone rang nonstop all evening, but I was not ready for that conversation. Not just yet. Eventually, Dad wrote me a wall of texts that explained how he and Mom were now Christian swingers, brought into the lifestyle by Kev and his wife. Ugh. I just replied saying that I wasn't coming home until they covered all the furniture in plastic. Thankfully, that was enough to break open the awkwardness, and I returned home soon after, where we all just acted like nothing happened. I still feel pretty weird every time I see the neighbors, though. 